Hello, my name is Kia Vower, and I'm going to be reading with you today Ezekiel 20 through 22. Go grab your Bible. Chapter 20. In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth day, some of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, and they sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, Speak to the elders of Israel and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Have you come to inquire of me as surely as I live? I will not let you inquire of me, declares the Sovereign Lord. Will you judge them? Will you judge them, son of man? Then confront them with the detestable practices of their ancestors and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord said. On the day I chose Israel, I swore with uplifted hand to the descendants of Jacob and revealed myself to them in Egypt. With the uplifted hand, I said to them, I am the Lord your God. On the day I swore to them that I would bring them out of Egypt into a land I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. And I said to them, each of you get rid of the vile images you have set your eyes on and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and would not listen to me. They did not get rid of the vile images they had set their eyes on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. So I said I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them in Egypt. But for the sake of my name, I brought them out of Egypt. I did it to keep my name from being profaned in the eyes of the nations among whom they lived and in whose sight I had revealed myself to the Israelites. Therefore, I led them out of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my decrees and made known to them my laws by which the person who obeys them will live. I also gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us, so they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. Yet the people of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not follow my decrees, but rejected my law, by which the person who obeys them will live, and they utterly desecrated my Sabbaths. So I said I will pour out my wrath on them and destroy them in the wilderness. But for the sake of the name, but for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from but for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Also, with uplifted hands, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands, because they rejected my laws and did not follow my decrees and did not and desecrated my Sabbath for their hearts were devoted to their idols. Yet I looked on them with pity and did not destroy them or put an end to them in the wilderness. I said to their children in the wilderness, do not follow the statues of your parents or keep their laws or defy yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God, follow my decrees and be careful to keep my law. Keep my Sabbaths holy that they may be a sign between us then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But the children of Israel rebelled against me, and they did not follow my decrees. They were not careful to keep my laws, of which I said, the person who obeys them will live by them. And they desecrated my Sabbath. So I said I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them in the wilderness. But I withheld my hand, and for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Also with the uplifted hand, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries because they had not obeyed my laws because, but had rejected my decrees and desecrated my Sabbaths. 
and their eyes lusted after their parents' idols. So I gave them other statutes that were not good and laws, and laws through which they could not live. I defiled them through their gifts, the sacrifice of every firstborn, that I may fill them with horror, so they would know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And this also your ancestors blasphemed me by being unfaithful to me when I brought them into the land I had sworn to them. When I brought them into the land that I had sworn to give them and they saw any high hill or any leafy tree, they there they offered their sacrifices, made offerings that aroused my anger, presented their fragrant incense and poured out their drink offering. Then I said to them, what is this high place you go to? It is called Bama to this day. Therefore say to Israelite, therefore say to the Israelite, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Will you defy yourselves the way your ancestors did and lust after their vile images? Will you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your children in the fire? You continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. Am I to let you inquire of me, you Israelites? As surely as I live, this declares the sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. You say, we want to be like the nations, like the people of the world who serve wood and stone. But what you have in mind will never happen. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I will reign over you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with outpoured wrath. I will bring you from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath. I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations and there face to face I will execute judgment upon you as I judged your ancestors in the wilderness of the land of Egypt so I will judge you declares the sovereign Lord I will take note of you as you pass under my rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant I will purge you of those who revolt and rebel against me although I will bring them out of the land where they are living, yet they will not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you people of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says: Go and serve your idols, every one of you, but afterward you will surely listen to me and no longer profane my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord, there in the land all the people of Israel will serve me, and there I will accept them. There I will require your offerings and your choice gifts, along with all of your holy sacrifices. I will accept you as fragrant incense when I bring you out from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered and I will be proved holy through you in the sight of the nation. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel and the land I had sworn with uplifted hand to give to your ancestors. There you will remember your conduct and all the actions by which you have defiled yourselves and you will loathe yourselves for all the evil you have done. You will know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake and not according to your evil ways and your corrupt practices. You people of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face towards the south. Preach against the south and prophesy against the forest of the south land. Say to the southern forest, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord said. I'm a, I am about to set fire to you and it will consume all your trees, both green and dry. The blazing flame will not be quenched and every face from south to north will be scorched by it. Everyone will see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It will not be quenched. Then I said, 
Sovereign Lord, they are saying of me, isn't he just telling parables? Chapter 21 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuary. Prophesy against the land of Israel and say to her, This is what the Lord says. I am against you. I will draw my sword from its sheath and cut off from you both the righteous and the wicked. Because I am going to cut off the righteous and the wicked, my sword will be unsheathed against everyone from south to north. Then all the people will know that I, the Lord, have drawn my sword from its sheath and I will not return again. Therefore groan, son of man, groan before them with broken heart and bitter grief. And when they ask you, why are you groaning? You shall say, because of the news that is coming, every heart will melt with fear and every hand will go limp. Every spirit will become faint and every leg will be wet with urine. It is coming. I will surely take place, declares the sovereign Lord. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Prophesy and say, this is what the Lord says. A sword, a sword, sharpened and polished, sharpened for the slaughter, polished to flash like lightning. Shall we rejoice the sep in the scepter of my royal son? The sword despises every such stick. The sword is appointed to be polished, to be grasped with the hand. It is sharpened and polished, made ready for the hand of the slayer. Cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people. It is against all the princes of Israel. They are thrown to the sword along with my people. Therefore, beat your breath. Testing will surely come. And what it, and what if even the scepter, which the sword despises, does not continue, declares the sovereign Lord. Then, son of man, prophesy and strike your hands together. Let the sword strike twice, even three times. It is a sword for slaughter, a sword for great slaughter, closing in on them from every side. So that the hearts may melt with fear and the fallen be many, I have stationed the sword for slaughter at all their gate. Look, it is forged to strike like lightning. It's grasp for slaughter. Slash to the right your sword, then to the left, wherever your blade is turned. I too will strike my hands together and my wrath will subside. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, mark out two words. Son of man, mark out two roads for the sword of the king of Babylon to take both starting from the same country. Make a signpost where the road branches off to the city. Mark out one road for the sword to come against Rahab of the Ammonite and another against Judah and fortified Jerusalem. For the king of Babylon will stop at the fork in the road at the junction of the two roads to seek an omen. He will cast lots with arrows. He will consult his idols. He will examine the liver. And to his right hand will come the lot for Jerusalem, where he is to set up battering rams, to give the command to slaughter, to sound the battle cry, to set the battering rams against the gates, to build a ramp, and to erect siege work. It will seem like a false omen to it will seem like a false omen to those who have sworn allegiance to him, but he will remind them of their guilt and take them captive. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord said. Because you people have brought to mind your guilt by your open rebellion, revealing your sins and all that you do, because you have done this, you will be taken captive. You profane and wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax, whose time of punishment has reached its climax, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take off the turban, remove the crown. It will not be as it was. The lowly will be exalted and the exalted will be brought low. A ruin, a ruin. 
I will make it a ruin. The crown will not be restored until he... The crown will not be restored until he to whom it rightfully belongs shall come. To him I will give it. And you, son of man, prophesy and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says about the Ammonites and their insults. A sword, a sword drawn for the slaughter, polished to consume and to flash like lightning, despite false visions concerning you and lying divinations about you, it will be laid on the necks of the wicked who are to be slain, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax. Let the sword return to its sheath and the place where you were created in the land of your ancestry. I will judge you. I will pour out my wrath on you and breathe out my fiery anger against you. I will deliver you into the hands of brutal men, men skilled in destruction. You will be fuel for the fire. Your blood will be shed in your land. You will be remembered no more, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Chapter 22 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, will you judge her? Will you judge the city of bloodshed? Then confront her with all her detestable practices and say, this is what the Sovereign Lord said. Your city that brings on herself doom by shedding blood in her midst and defiles herself by making idols. You have become guilty because of the blood you have shed and have become defiled by the idols you have made. You have brought your days to a close and the end of your years has come. Therefore, I will make you an object of scorn to all nations and a laughingstock to all countries. Those who are near and those who are far will mock you. You infamous city, full of turmoil. See how each of the princes of Israel who are in you uses his power to shed blood? In you they have treated father and mother with contempt. In you they have oppressed the foreigner and mistreated the fatherless and the widow. You have despised my holy things and desecrated my Sabbaths. In you are slanderous who are bent on shedding blood, and you are those who eat at the mountain shrines and commit lewd acts, and you, those who dishonor their father's bed. And you are those who violate women during their period when they are ceremonially unclean. And you, one man commits a detestable offense with his neighbor's wife, another shamefully de defiles his daughter-in-law, and another violates his sister, his own father's daughter. And you are people who accept brides and shed blood. You take an interest and make a profit from the poor. You extort unjust gain from your no neighbors. And you have forgotten me, declares the sovereign Lord. I will surely strike my hands together at the unjust gain you have made at the blood you have shed in your mist. You, will your courage endure or your hands be strong in the day I deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. I will disperse you among the nations and scatter you through the countries and I will put an end to your uncleanness. When you have been defiled in the eyes of the nations, you will know that I am the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the people of Israel have become dross to me. All of them are the copper, tin, iron, and lead left inside a furnace. They are but the dross of silver. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you have all become dross, I will gather you into Jerusalem. As silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin are gathered into a furnace to be melted with a fiery blast, so will I gather you in my anger and my wrath and put you inside the city and melt you. I will gather you and I will blow on you with my fiery wrath and you will be melted inside her. As silver is melted in a furnace, so you will be melted inside her, and you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my wrath on you. 
Again, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the land, you are a land that has not been cleansed or rained on in the day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princes within her like roaring, like a roaring lion, tearing its prey. They devour people, take treasures and precious things, and make many widows within her. Her, pre her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy thing. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean, and they shut their eyes to keep the and they shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbath, so, so that I am profaned among them. Her officials within her are like wolves tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the sovereign Lord said. When the Lord has not spoken, the people of the land practice exhortation and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Hello and welcome to Fear Into Faith Global Bible Revival, where we are on a mission to get one million people to read the Bible cover to cover in a year. My name is Summer Day and I'm in the studio with Kia Vower Lock Power. Woo -woo. <laughs> yes. Are you excited to be here? I'm so excited to be here. All right. Now you just finished reading your section, getting recorded in the other room. What was it like to read the Word of God live like that? Well, quite honestly, it was just empowering as the Word of God always is. And so at a point, you just forget that you're reading for, you know, other people. Mm -hmm. And I just got into the story. Love and it. the thing that is so surprising to me that actually over, it just made me overjoyed, mm -hmm. the story of Abigail. That's one of my favorite Bible stories. Oh. And so I was like, yes, my girl is in here. You know, I love it. They were just coming through. So I was just so excited so for many that. So different readers have been like, Jesus, because we assigned what you were going to read. Right. And so many different readers have shared something where they were like, oh, my gosh, it was my favorite scripture. It was my favorite. Yeah. I love it. Abigail's your girl. That's my girl. So you just kind of got in it and almost yeah. forgot what you were doing. Literally, like I just got in it and, you know, it, it, it's the word of God, so it ministers to you as you're reading, and it reminds you. And so even the selection of the scriptures that were, I didn't read them ahead of time. <laughs> uh, okay. I know I was told to, but I was running. It was, you know, no, that day. You jumped on the project late in the game. You're okay. Oh, my gosh. But I'm so glad that I did. Like, li literally, this has been an answer prayer. Literally. I love it. Yeah. Yay! Because you, you didn't know me. You didn't know about this project. No. I just had a friend who had come and was a reader and you just finally said, hey, reading the word of God, I'm in, and then jumped in obedience. It was actually a podcast that I was on and um, he told me about the project. He said, would you be interested? I'm like, what? Yeah, of course I'll be interested. Because <laughs> I'd literally been praying since the beginning of the year for an opportunity like this. Wow. I didn't know how it was going to happen. So I knew, um, automatically I knew, I was like, this is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So mostly with opportunities that come my way, I have to think about it, pray about it, talk to my husband, all that stuff. Yeah, This one... Um, yeah, I just kind of said, yeah. And then I was like, this is where I'm going to be because I know that this is Holy Spirit breed. I love it. Yes. I love it. Tell me why you think that. Tell me why you feel like people reading the word of God is so important. Well, because it's alive. The, the word of God is literally alive. And so I don't care how many times I've read the story of Abigail over the years. Mm -hmm. There's something new that jumps out. Yeah. There is a new revelation. There yeah. is a reminder of our kinsman redeemer. It is a shadow and typology of Jesus Christ and how he redeemed us. Yeah. And so there's so much more in there than that. Mm -hmm. But because it's alive, it ministers something new. Every time you open up the word of God, you're going to get something different. Yeah. I don't care 
how many times you read it. Yeah. If you're one of those Bible readers who reads everything, mm -hmm. oh, every four months you're reading the Bible or every year you're reading through the Bible yeah. or however you do it, you're going to look at stories you read in your childhood and you're going to read them again and they're going to speak something different yeah. to you because that's how good our God is. He, <laughs> he, he has put his word here on this earth. Yeah. It is alive. It is mm -hmm. a breathing word. Mm -hmm. And so that's why. I love it. I love it. I can hear, I can hear your passion. Oh, yeah. You ever, you ever read in the Bible and you know you've read that many times. You've read the story of Abigail. But you look at a particular verse and you swear, did you just put that in there today? I've never seen that one. You ever have that happen to you? I have. Um, and the the funny thing is, I'm so glad that you guys chose what you chose because I was like, Lord, they could have given me revelation. They could have given me parts of Ezekiel that is a little scary, but um, it doesn't matter because it's all there for a reason. And so it's there to minister to your spirit, even if you don't understand it, just keep reading, get something different. Yeah. And I love reading and rereading stories that are familiar mm -hmm. um, and then hearing them preached by maybe a different pastor or yeah. preacher or a minister of the mm -hmm. word, you get something different. So I think of the word of God as like a diamond with different facets and you're going to get something good no matter how the angle is hitting on that particular day. It's good. And the light can shine from all the different areas. I Come love on. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, I don't really know very much about you. So kind of, but your name is Kia. Yes. Where are you from? I'm a military brat. Um, I like to start off with that because I was born in Madrid, Spain, checkerboard at the U.S. And I got born to Dallas. Born in Spain. As soon as I could. <laughs> to Dallas as soon as For you some could. barbecue <laughs> and some Tex-Mex. Mm, okay. It's good. It's good barbecue here. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody lying. Look for real. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. And how long have you been in Dallas? Uh, on and off since 1989. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Quite a time. It's home. And what do you do? Uh, what don't I do? Oh, I love that. What so do what do I do? Are um, you a chef at a restaurant? No. We could play this guessing game. I wish. You change tires. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not mechanical. Um, do you grow fruit? Okay. I get flats, though. Okay. But what um, is it you do? <laughs> so um, I am married to a pastor who has been uh, in ministry for over 22 years. Um, and 21 of those years we spent in ministry together. We married in 2002. Yeah. Um, so when I met him, he was an associate youth pastor at a very big church here. And I was just a little intern. You were a little um, I was a little intern. Long for the pastor. I was oh, the pastor. Girl. Okay, you got to stop right there. We want that. Tell us tell us what it was like to be the little intern falling for the pastor. Well, um, I had come out of a pretty sketchy lifestyle. And so I wasn't really a church girl, even though I kind of grew up in the church, but I kind of got away from it. Okay, we're going to get there in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so I was just like, when I found out that he liked me after three interviews for the strategic support team, I asked my friend who was like office manager, I was like, is he interviewing anyone else? She said, no, he just keeps requesting you. And she's from Trinidad and Tobago. So she said it with a real strong accent. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Kia, I think he likes you. I said, he doesn't like me. She said, yes, I think he does. And so um, about six months later, we were married and... Uh, <gasps> Three children later, wow. uh, 21 years later. So our marriage is an adult. Wow. Yeah. Our, our marriage is an adult. 21. Our marriage has reached adulthood. Yeah. So good. Okay. Yeah. So you were born and raised in the church. I uh, love to hear your God journey. I'd love to hear yeah. you take us starting with raised in the church, parents took you to your church. Uh, pretty much raised in the church. You know, um, traveling around, would you go to different churches? Uh, we went to a lot of different churches, grew up in a lot of different places. Um, as a result and not as a result of my father being in the military. Um, but he was dishonorably discharged uh, for some sketchy stuff. And we came to the U.S. And we faithfully went to church, but we had sinful problems. Mm -hmm. But we were hidden in the church, nestled in there, um, getting the word of God, but living like H-E double hockey sticks wow. behind the steam. Wow. Yes, yes. So he was a retired veteran. I say retired, but it was dishonorably discharged. Um, but a veteran nonetheless. You can check out the rest of this interview right here or by going to BibleRevival.tv. And if this show has blessed you, you can help us bless others by partnering with us for as little as $20 a month and help us to expand the reach of this show. 
We'd also like to invite you to join our Kingdom Discipleship Program, where you have an opportunity to get on weekly Bible Zoom calls with us and people around the world to deep dive into His Word. And you can check all that out at BibleRevival.tv. I'll see you next time, my friend.